Okay. I'm going to work self-review 9-4 on page 274 out of chapter 9. This is a question that asks us if we use the population of Scandia and we take a sample of 40 families and determine, it's determined that 15 of them attend church regularly, we want to construct a 95% confidence interval for the proportion of families attending church. First question is whether or not I need the finite population correction factor. And I've got to do that up front because if I don't, I'm going to use the wrong formula and my confidence interval is going to be no good. So what the textbook tells you on page 273 is the rule of thumb we use for this correction factor. If n, the sample of the sample size, small n, divided by n, the finite population size, is greater than 5%, then I use the correction factor. So what I've done down here is I've taken 40 divided by 250 gives me 16. 16% or 0.16 is greater than 0.05. So I go up here and I say, okay guys, now I have to use this finite population correction factor. Other than this, there's absolutely no difference this is the exact same way you all construct a regular confidence interval. The whole key is, is because 0.16 is greater than 0.15, I simply add on this part of the formula. So now what I've done is I've really just kind of collected together all the information I'm going to need to solve the problem. Um, I've got my big formula up here, which tells me that in order to calculate this confidence interval, I'm going to have to take P plus or minus, and this Z.025 is simply that 95, I'm so bad at drawing with this thing, 95% confidence interval, because remember that 5% is split, right? Watch this. It's split, right? I'm taking 5% and I'm splitting it between here and here. And when I take 5%, 0 0.05, and divide it by 2, I get 0 0.025 up and lower end, and then I end up with the other 0 0.025 up here in the top end. So remember, that 0 0.025 is simply saying, hey, that's the amount of the data that falls in these, whoops, in these two little teeny tiny cur um, tails at the end of the curve. So I've got my formula, um, I have gone ahead and I've calculated p hat. Remember p hat is the sample proportion where well, the problem told me that I had 15 people or 15 families who said that they attended church regularly and that was out of my sample of 40. So I simply take point, I simply take 15 divided by 40 and that gives me p hat. The other thing that I'm going to need in order to do this formula up here, I need this 1 minus p hat. So I simply took 1 minus p hat to give me my 0.625. I already have my n value. Remember I said sample size was 40. So that sample size of 40 is simply going to plug in to this formula here and here. Um, I also told you that we had our z-score and that we had the, or the confidence interval level and that was the 0 .0 0075, 0.075, rather, and I simply know that that's always, every single time, 95% confidence interval, upper and lower tail, when the standard deviation is known is always going to be 1.96, so that write that one down somewhere. And I also know, given from the problem, that the population of Scandia is 250, which is my big N, which I need here and here. So now, what have I done so far? I have gathered together everything that I need for my formula. I have my confidence interval, I have p hat, I have 1 minus p hat, I know what my big N or my population um, value is. I know what my little n of my sample value is. The only thing that I am now missing and that I still need in order to solve this 
is the value of P, right? The value of P. Remember, since we're using the point estimates here, this value for P is simply going to be that 0.375. So now let's just go ahead and plug the stuff in and solve it. So what I have done down here through the magic of Camtasia is I have simply taken this formula up here, used all the information I had, and then I have simply dropped it into the formula. What I'm going to end up with is I'm going to end up with a single value. When I get that single value, remember, in this case, the single value ends up being 0.138. Oh, that looks pretty good. Just remember that what I'm going to do, because I'm looking for an interval, is I'm going to take 0.375 and I'm going to apply this. We'll say 0.375 plus 0.138. I'm going to turn around and do it again. I'm going to say 0.375 minus 0.138 because in a confidence interval, you're always going to have two numbers, a higher end of the interval and a lower end of the interval. So once I've done that little bit of math, um, what I'm going to end up with is I'm going to end up with a confidence interval that looks like this. What that confidence interval simply tells me is that there is a 95, remember we use 95% up here, there's a 95% probability that the true, that the true proportion of the people who live in Scandia who attend church regularly is somewhere between 23.7% and 51.3%. All that's telling me is, is there is a 95 with 95 percent confidence that I can tell you that between 23.7 percent of these people and 51.3 percent of these people attend church on a regular basis. Let me know how this works and I will see you guys around class.